uh, that we've seen in a long time because Edge really did uh, have a phenomenal connection with fans and wrestlers themselves can justifiably say that Edge had this connection that I'm trying to illustrate and put into perspective for you. Uh, but you'll just have to wait and see on March 31st what I'm talking about it because it will uh, guaranteeably come into fruition. I'm really expecting this one to be an overwhelming and emotional one for Edge, one of the greatest nights of his life. Joining the uh, collection of wrestlers that is absolutely unparalleled to anything we have ever seen in our lives. Stone Cold, Steve Austin, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Andre the Giant, The Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, George the Animal Steel, Bob Orton, Rowdy Piper. So many wonderful people have gone into the Hall of Fame and Edge joins less than 100 people. A detail, uh, a tin bit of information that was first given out by Jerry the King Lawler during an in-ring segment. And it's right. Uh, if you actually go to the sub-site uh, for the WWE Hall of Fame, uh, you can actually see that there have only been less than 100 people uh, that have been inducted into the Hall of Fame. It's a sub-site off of WWE.com. Uh, the first induction was Andre the Giant on March 22, 1993. I believe that was the date uh, they put him in, the same year that he died. Uh, so it's a trend that's continued uh, with WWE seemingly a year after someone passes on or somebody retires. Uh, they're in the Hall of Fame, so it's a trend that's continued ever since 1993, the better part of 19 years. Uh, they've kept up that trend. And do you think that's a good trend to have? Uh, tell us at YouTube.com, Jonathan Clark 22, and by joining the conversation at Facebook.com, Jonathan Clark, is it a good trend to put somebody in the Hall of Fame about a year and a half after they retire or a year after they pass away? They did it for Eddie Guerrero in 2005. Uh, they've done it for people who've passed on in the past. The only one, because they're not legally allowed to, that they haven't put in the Hall of Fame is Owen Hart. I think someday uh, he will go in there uh, once Martha Stewart or Martha Hart gets her head out of her ass. I guess I could refer to her being uh, Martha Stewart because Martha Stewart and her are, are similar in a lot of ways. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, but once Martha Hart gets uh, you know her head out of her ass, I think Owen Hart probably will. Uh, be in the Hall of Fame. I think he should be uh, because of his tremendous accomplishments in the wrestling business and I would have loved to have seen a Joe and Hart matches. Unfortunately, we never did uh, really get to see a good program involving them. We saw them work together uh, in the past, but we didn't really see a, a really good program between Edge and Owen Hart like I would have liked to have seen. I would have liked to have seen a Bret Owen Hart style program between Edge and Owen Hart. I'm surprised Chris Jericho isn't talking about Edge's induction because Chris Jericho has a phenomenal amount of history uh, with someone like Edge. Um, I really do go in detail about Edge's Hall of Fame induction along with the Four Horsemen uh, in a uh, past archive for our YouTube channel. It's called uh, Jonathan Clark Talks About Edge Going Into the 2012 Hall of Fame. Uh, make sure you check it out. It's a six-part series for our YouTube channel. It's a video archive, one of our latest ones. And I really do talk about it in detail. And I'll probably write a column for In This Corner with Jonathan Clark uh, on Edge's induction. But like I said, you know, I think that uh, what needs to be noted about Edge's Hall of Fame induction is the fact that he contributed almost 15 years uh, to the wrestling industry. And he had this incredible bond uh, with these fans that will last an eternity. And uh, I know it because I saw it in person. I saw the bond that Edge had with fans uh, for the first time 10 years ago in 2002. And it seemed like, you know, he uh, was talking to the fans like he had known them uh, his entire life. I mean, Edge might have never known you uh, one day in his life. And he would have talked to you like, you know, he knew you for about 15 years. And that's the impression that I got uh, from, from seeing it in person. And it was the only one time I ever did see Edge uh, perform, but it was an incredible experience for me, and I got to see a number of different SmackDown superstars like John Cena perform for the first time in 2002 when they were upstart talents. Uh, you know, it, it's amazing to see how far they've come a decade uh, in the future. It really has. And it was a pleasure of mine to actually know, uh, you know, Edge as a performer. And, uh, you know, I hope that one day I'll get to know him as an actual human being. I've gotten to know many professional wrestlers through my interview career. Uh, but, you know, I do thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen uh, to my opinion once again on Edge. As I mentioned, you know, I, I really think that, you know, this ties in well with the Legends House reality show, uh, Sit the Day View. 
uh, with the Iron Sheik and the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, on the uh, WWE Network sometime in 2012. And I think it ties in well with the whole WrestleMania theme. Uh, Edge is also a huge part of the WWE 12 video game, which I previously mentioned here on the show. He's also a huge part of the WWE Best Pay-Per-View Matches of 2011, uh, having his final match at WrestleMania against Alberto Del Rio, going out on top uh, as the champion. There's no better way uh, for somebody to go out. And Edge definitely had that tremendous honor given to him a few days after WrestleMania when he retired on Raw and he had a huge send-off uh, just uh, the day after the SmackDown taping. So I think that, you know, he, he definitely got uh, what he deserved. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's amazing to know that he's going in uh, with so much hype, uh, with so much prestigiousness, and so much respect uh, is something that needs to be noted and taken into consideration as well because a lot of people uh, haven't gone into the Hall of Fame with, uh, you know, the respect they probably would have liked to have gone into the Hall of Fame with. Edge is one guy who has no regrets, or shouldn't have any regrets, I think, uh, because of the bond he had with the fans, the bond that he had with the wrestling business, and his desire to never quit when he probably should have quit uh, five or six years ago when he had that huge neck injury or that huge knee injury that could have put him out for good. Uh, but he had a desire to, you know, come back uh, quicker than probably anyone uh, would have. He definitely pulled a, a John Cena on more than one occasion. Uh, but I, I really think that Edge was one guy who created a lot of magic inside the wrestling business, and he definitely deserves all the respect in the world for being able to do so. The Hall of Fame is definitely set to be rated R uh, on March 31st, 2012. Tickets are available now. They went on sale for the Hall of Fame induction ceremony a few days ago. And uh, ever since they went on sale, sales are doing phenomenal. You can call 1-800-745-3000, I believe is the number. I think that's the number for the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. It's on WWE.com. Uh, but the uh, number for the Hall of Fame induction ceremony, I believe, uh, to purchase tickets to the arena is 1-800-745-3000. I saw that on TV the other night. Uh, it's a toll-free number, so you can call if you want tickets and stuff. Uh, but if it's not the right number, you can actually go to the WWE Hall of Fame uh, subsite. Check out some of the nominees uh, that have been inducted into the Hall of Fame and uh, upcoming inductions. And information on this year is taking place on March 31st, uh, 2012. It will also be televised for the fans in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, but I believe the number is 1-800-745-3000. It's going to be a phenomenal night. And the following night, the John Cena Rock match. Edge will probably be at WrestleMania. He'll be there with the uh, Hall of Fame inductees who will come out on the stage for about three minutes, have their name announced with their plaque dressed up all nice, you know, he'll probably have a bigger role than they will. He'll uh, have a couple of segments backstage because he was such a crucial part uh, from 98 right through to 2011, so, you know, he'll definitely have something huge going on there. Uh, but follow me on Twitter at HGW Entertainment, Jonathan Clark, and you can also drop me a comment here at YouTube.com, Jonathan Clark 22. A bit of a, you know, part two to uh, Edge's Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Found it really unique how all those legends were talking about them the way they were. You can find this video as a part two, I guess you could call it, of Edge's Hall of Fame induction ceremony from 2012, which is up and coming, uh, with the WWE logo as the graphic. Uh, so make sure you check it all out, leave us comments, follow me on Twitter. And uh, coming up next here on the show, I'll play uh, Life After You by Daughtry. All I'm after is a life full of laughter of only we could have that. Daughtry's next. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Jonathan Clark. Follow me on Twitter at HW Entertainment Jonathan Clark 1. Join the conversation at Facebook.com Jonathan Clark and check out all our video archives right here at YouTube.com Jonathan Clark 22. Going to the slap.com is like It's a slap. A wonderful bowl of hot fresh milk. <laughs> the slap of food. <laughs> it's like being slapped by the internet. Okay. No, that's that's disturbing. <clears throat> yeah. Let me see if I can try this. This sounds like fun. Ah, Jesus. And then they say the Internet's not supposed to encourage violence. You're listening to HEW Entertainment Variety Radio with me, Jonathan Clark. Ah.
When something takes place in the world of professional wrestling, you know where to go. WrestleZone.com WrestleZone.com Covering all the latest breaking news daily. Interactive forums where you can chat with thousands of other wrestling fans. Exclusive editorials and audio features by some of today's top wrestling superstars. Exclusive video content. Weekly polls. Live play-by-play coverage of every WWE and TNA pay-per-view. And now, and now. Featuring WrestleZone Radio, live, live, with news, in-depth discussions, debates, and interviews with wrestling's top stars, past, past, and present. present. When you think wrestling, think WrestleZone. WrestleZone.com. He considers himself God's gift to wrestling, and millions of his faithful agree. With nearly four hours of footage and exclusive commentary and matches, this DVD chronicles Daniel's rise from Chicago's Windy City Wrestling to the Asylum in Nashville and finally to the top of TNA. TNA Home Video presents Heaven Sent, Hell Bound, the best of Christopher Daniels. Available at most retailers and TNAWrestling.com. Hey you, you right there, the one listening to this show. While you're tuning into this broadcast or when you read the news on WrestleZone.com, are you forming opinions of it all? Or do you just agree with everything you see and hear? If you actually have some sort of afterthought, which, by the way, is normal, we want to know what it is. There are thousands of wrestling fans just like you that simply can't hold their thoughts in either. And they let it all out in our interactive forums. You have a voice, so use it. Simply visit forms.wrestlezone.com. Don't just be active, be reactive in the official WrestleZone.com forms. For all the latest in mixed martial arts, be sure to visit WrestleZone's sister site, SureDog.com. Complete with daily news, exclusive video, interviews, live radio broadcast, interactive forums, and the very popular Fight Finder with bios and complete match-by-match histories of your favorite fighters. SureDog is the only place you need when it comes to mixed martial arts. Visit SureDog.com today. Hi, my name is Adam Nudelman, but I play the Phantom on the radio. I'm here to remind you that, oh, screw that, my book, Mysteries of Wrestling South, is available at finer bookstores everywhere. That stupid fake voice, I hate it. I wrote a book along with Sir Adam Kleinberg called Mysteries of Wrestling. It has the questions that you wanted answered. Why does Steve Austin hate Jeff Jarrett? Are referees really blind and stupid and dumb? Who is actually the toughest wrestler in the business outside of the ring? Hulk Hogan, The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Kamala, we get down and dirty with insider facts you've never read about anywhere else. So what are you waiting for? It makes a great stocking stuffer. You're too short, you buy three of them, you get tall, you just stand on them.